Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another awesome episode of On the Throttle with Jackie Van Ham and my buddy Josh bringing you all of the awesome breaking news going on out here in motorcycles and power sports. For today's show, Josh, it is that magical time of year. And no, I'm not talking about Christmas, although it is kind of Christmas for motorcyclists because it is the official, unofficial beginning of the motorcycle riding season. And that means it must be Daytona Bike Week. And that is coming up right around the corner. So for today's episode, I'm going to be chatting with you about all of the best things going on at Daytona Bike Week. And Josh, what do you have going on in your neck of the woods? So the two that I've got today, I am first off talking about adventure stuff, but there's a new adventure that's an old adventure that, of course, that's what I'm going to talk about. And because you always blame me for talking about adventure bikes and dirt bikes, I'm going to talk about something that's very different, but it's really not. <laughs> I was going to say, I know there's a catch in there somewhere, man. It's so we're going to have to wait for those awesome stories after this word from our sponsor. And today is a doubleheader episode because we also have an interview with Cinnamon Kearns from Motorcycle Industry Council from AIM Expo talking about what was going on at that awesome show this past year. So stick around. You're not going to want to miss it, but it's going to be right after this word from our sponsor. From the trails to the track, DID chains are manufactured with the highest quality materials and designed to give you an optimal riding experience and are the top chain choice worldwide. When performance, quality, and consistency matter, go with DID. What drives you? Well, as promised, today's show, I am going to be focusing on everything Daytona Bike Week going on over here. Josh's favorite motorcycling event of the entire totally. year. Actually, Josh, I, I think you actually would really be into it because I think a lot of people get a little not confused, but they have a very narrow idea of what goes on at some of these bigger Good. rallies like Daytona and Sturgis. And there's actually tons of racing going on at both of those events, yes. actually. And I'm going to talk about that during my part of today's show. So let's go ahead and dive on in beach pun intended Daytona Bike Week. All right, first slide, Miss Ashley. Let's get on in here. Very first event going on at the beginning of the week. I did attempt to do these in a chronological order. So for those of you following along at home, this is in a bit of a calendar schedule. The very first week of the um, Daytona Bike Week is going to be starting this weekend. It is Saturday, March 4th. Technically, the event starts on Friday the 3rd. The first event I want to talk about is the Sons of Speed. This is going on at New Smyrna Speedway. This is an antique motorcycle race that takes place every single year almost um it's been going on for a handful of years this is a fantastic event it is on a paved but banked surface so it definitely has that like board tracker racing type vibes it is very very harley davidson and a little bit of indian motorcycle heavy if you love antique motorcycles this should be on your calendar there is literally no other place in the world to watch antique motorcycle racing going on at this level and this takes place on the 4th of march next Slide, please, Miss Ashley. Also going on the 4th of March, it is the time for Daytona Bike Week. It is their Supercross Round. That's right, in case you didn't know, Supercross runs every single year at Daytona Bike Week, usually during the opening weekend. This is so much fun. This is such a big deal on the Supercross calendar. This is a bit of an iconic race. It is um, in the Daytona International Speedway, of course. They build their own great big, huge uh dirt and sand track. It is absolutely crazy. You, you can see by the slide on the screen, there is fireworks, there is jumps. This is just a total hoot. This is a great time for the whole family and it is absolutely packed. This goes on Saturday night, also the 4th, but the uh, Sons of Speed races run a little bit more towards the afternoon, early evening, so you can still catch both if you are quick, quick, quick. So that's what's going on on the 4th. It is another round for the folks at Supercross. Next slide, please, Miss Ashley. Another great event that is going on, this is Warren Lane's annual antique and chopper show. This goes on on Sunday, March 5th. This is at the Broken Spoke Saloon up in beautiful Ormond Beach. This is an excellent show. Again, this is antiques and choppers. It's a little bit of everything. I've seen all sorts of cool stuff at this show. It is not just tricked out custom bikes. It is not just tricked out Harley Davidson's. It's a little bit of everything, and it's always a heck of a good time. 
time, Broken Spoke is absolutely one of my top, top, most favorite places to go and hang out at. It's a beautiful, beautiful setting. Really, really fun. The band Hairball plays there like every single night. It's a total hoot. Go check it out. This is up in Ormond Beach. Next slide, please. The other event that is going on, this will be on Monday, date March 6th. This is going on at uh, Daytona International Speedway, if I have that correct. I believe that I do. Yeah, I know that I do, actually. Yeah, it's a DIS. This is the annual Sportster Bike Show hosted by Pat over at Lead Sled. This is a great show. This has turned into a really, really big deal at several events here in the U.S. He hosts this mini bike show within a show. This is a big deal. This always gets a great crowd, really interesting bikes and sportsters only. No glides allowed. This is strictly for sportsters. And you can see some of the classes are chopper, tracker, stock, best paint, cafe, custom, and best of show. This is going on on Monday, March 6th at noon. Next slide, please. The next event that is going to be going on is the following day. Oh, no, this I threw in because this kind of covers the entire week. This is for folks that have been going to Daytona for forever and ever. And we knew it as Bruce Rossmeyer's Destination Daytona that is also up in beautiful Ormond Beach. Uh, it was recently sold and purchased by a new company. That new company is called Teddy Morse. So the name of this place has changed. It still is the same place. Awesome party, a bazillion vendors bands, concerts, food, uh, beer, whatever you want. It is all up at Destination Daytona, although now it's referred to as Teddy Morse's Harley Davidson. Um, but it also just gets called Destination Daytona by the old timers like myself who've been going to, to going to Daytona Beach for a hot minute. So you can see the slide on your screen right now. It's showing you several different things that are going on, including March 4th, the Full Throttle Kickoff Bike Show. There is a Hardcore Cycles Performance Bike Show. Flying Piston, which is a great charity, hosts their Builder's Breakfast, which is a charity event. There is a bike show for the Mafia, a uh, bike show Mafia all-class bike show. That is usually kind of a big wheel bagger type show, and that's going on on March 9th. Again, go check it out. Destiny, Destination Daytona, De 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 sorry, Destination Daytona. I'm stammering over my words because I'm so excited about it. Destination De Daytona is one of my favorite places. It is massive. There is just tons of vendors. It is an awesome, awesome, good time. If you can't find the part thing, piece of gear, helmet, whiz bang, whatever you're looking for down in Daytona proper, head on up there because I promise you they have it. All right, next slide, please. So another great bike show that is going on is hosted by the folks over at Cycle Source. This is their annual custom bike show. This is Tuesday, March 7th. This is also going to be at the Broken Spoke. Again, uh, Broken Spoke is one of my most favorite places. It is absolutely beautiful. And it is up in Ormond Beach. So this is really cool. This will be Tuesday afternoon. This is a great, really, really good show. So make sure you turn out for that. It is on Tuesday, March 7th, hosted by Cycle Source Magazine. Next slide. Um, yet more custom bike shows going on during the week. These are the folks over at V Twin Visionary. They are hosting their Speed and Style Custom Style, style Custom Cycle Showcase. This is also at Daytona International Speedway. This is also March seventh. Notice an awful lot of overlap here. You have to make some really tough decisions during Daytona Bike Week as to where you're going to go, and you have to plot it out super carefully. Which is why I love doing this show for people because the first handful of years I went to Daytona. It was so overwhelming and there's so much to do and see. And it was so hard to like pinpoint where it was all at. So I wanted to go ahead in the past handful of years, especially here over at NPN, I've hosted this show featuring the things that are going on at Daytona and putting them in a little bit of like a linear calendar so you can make the hard decisions for yourself if you're at Daytona. So anyway, let's jump back into it at DIS, Daytona International Speedway, March 7th. And actually, they're there the whole week, and they're going to have all sorts of stuff going on. They're partnered up with Harley-Davidson, so go stop by and go say hey. Again, that is the folks at V-Twin Visionary. Next slide, please. March 8th, this is the annual Perowitz Custom Paint Show. This is Dave Perowitz, the legend, and his daughter, the very excellent and legend in her own right, Jody Perowitz, who also races at the Sons of Speed. This is their annual custom paint show. If you are a custom paint, mega flake, type nerd, you need to go to this show. It is always bananas. This is a great show. Sick bikes, beautiful, beautiful customs, lots of like big wheel baggers, lots of bikes with audio systems, lots of bikes, obviously with killer paint. This is on Wednesday, March, March 8th, 
also at the Broken Spoke. Notice a trend here. Some of my favorite stuff happens at Broken Spoke. So I have to give them all the love. Uh, next slide, please. This show is at Tropical Tattoo. This is Chopper Time. This is their annual old school chopper show. This has been going on for approximately 500 years. Uh, this bike is, this show's been going on for a hot minute. This is one of the most iconic custom bike shows at all of Daytona Bike Week. If you are only gonna be able to go to one show, this should be it. This is a hell of a turnout, a heck of a party, great bike show. But to be honest, the bike show fills up that front parking lot. The real bike show is all of the hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands and thousands and thousands of motorcycles parked on the street, all the way encompassing tattoo, um, tropical tattoos parking lot. It is just full of sick, awesome bikes. I've seen everything from antique two strokes. I've seen a single cylinder BMW there. I've seen tons of antique bikes, modern bikes, big wheel baggers, uh, custom bikes, race bikes, flat trackers, you name it, it's there. This goes on on Thursday afternoon, every single Daytona Bike Week. So this is taking place on March 9th. This is Thursday afternoon. Get there early. It gets very, very, very crowded. It is an awesome time. Again, triple tattoo going on on March 9th. Now, the second weekend is when the racing also starts happening again, and this is the road racing this time. Road racing happens the second weekend, and it takes place over the entire course of that second weekend. Technically, the 200 only runs on March 11th, but leading up to that, there is racing going on from Moto America King of the Baggers, Super Hooligan, and Twins Cup. They will all be racing on the Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday, March 11th is the Daytona 200, if I have that date right, which I think I do, what, 9th, 10th, 11th, no, Saturday is the 200. So anyway, the whole weekend, everything going on, road racing is happening at Daytona International Speedway. Make sure you go check it out. Like I said, there's practices, there's racing, and then there's more racing going on over the entire weekend. It is a double header. They do run two race days back to back. So make sure you go and check it out. That is the whole reason why Daytona Bike Week even exists is the 200 by the way in case you did not know that that's why bike week even exists and is the thing this year they've really really stacked it like i said they've added king of the baggers to it there's all sorts of vip access for harley davidson folks um the super hooligans are going to be there which is the roland sands design race series twins cup uh, powered by Revit is going to be going on as well. So just some awesome racing going on the second weekend of bike week at daytona international speedway now what else is going on ashley is that my final slide throw it on back to the first one. Oh no. So this is the very end of the weekend. Also the ninth and 10th Daytona short track racing is happening. This is dirt track racing happening, but also at Daytona international speedway. This is on the short track located just outside of the road racing Daytona international speedway area. This goes on. This is a two, uh, two day event as well. This is a double header. They're running two race days back to back. This is on the ninth and the 10th. This is the very first opening round for American flat track racing. And I know I am super excited about the season opening up and checking it out and seeing what's going on. There's going to be some more epic battles shaping up. I cannot wait. Is there one more slide, Miss Ashley? I know it was a lot. I think I put like 11 or 12 slides in today's program. Okay, so we're back to Sons of Speed. The last thing I want to leave you with, and this is not related to motorcycling whatsoever, except if you've gone to Daytona Bike Week in the past, I want to pour it out. I'm going to pour it out for one of the greatest restaurants in Daytona Bike Week. It was called DJ's Deck. If you do not know, they closed, sadly. RIP DJ's Deck. But the world's greatest hush puppies were at DJ's deck and have no fear. I literally got on the internet and searched who else is making these hush puppies and they are at Hulls in Ormond Beach. It is awesome seafood and killer <laughs> hush puppies. Go check it out. You're, you'll thank me later. I'm telling you. Go to Hulls, Ormond Beach. That's it. That's all I got to say about that. Anyway, I'll, Josh, I'll go there in the off season. All... I'll, I'll go know, there in the off bad. season. There's there's too many people there for for and i mean you know because you go towards the people i go away from the people now the thing that i'll say too i mean with the the race the daytona 200 if you i i love some of the stuff that goes on it's a unique race it's not a traditional race it doesn't really fit in on the road racing calendar because it's on the high bank it's very much about just top speed 
but it's kind of nuts. Yeah. The thing that I will say, last year's winner, Brandon Patch, if you follow him on YouTube, go take a peek when you're done watching this here. He just re is releasing parts of a series called For the Love of Supermoto that shows what oh. kind of alien rider he is and the control and handling nice. that it's, there's a reason why he won Daytona last year. Yeah, yeah, it's always really exciting racing um, because I usually do go to Daytona for work every single year. I am always surprised by how many people go to the track, go to Daytona International Speedway, which is where there's a ton of vendors, by the way. So if you're looking to shop or test ride a motorcycle, that's where all the big trucks are at. They go there and they hear the practice that happens on like Thursday and Friday for the 200 are qualifying. And they're like, what's going on? What is that? What's happening? And don't even know that the race is happening. So that's why I really wanted to lean on it. But I'm also really excited that they're adding King of the Baggers to it because I think that as what's been happening the last handful of years, King of the Baggers is bringing these V-Twin folks over to road racing land and exposing them to this awesome high level premier American road racing. So I'm really excited. I think that it'll they'll have a better turnout. I hope that they do. It's always a heck of a good time. I love watching the highlights. The race itself is terrifically long. It is 200 miles. Uh, it is terrifically long, so I usually just catch the highlights from it. I don't have time to watch the whole thing. But that's what's going on at Daytona. It is one of my most favorite events of the year. It is sunshine. It is surf. It is sand. It is motorcycles. It is hush puppies and fried fish. It's all my favorite things. If you are going, have an excellent time. If you have friends that are going, make sure you go ahead and hit this share button right now because they're going to want to know about some of the best things happening at Bike Week. Josh, what do you got going on for your first story? So if you're exhausted from Bike Week, Aprilia has a way for you to get away <laughs> from that. So back in episode 43, if you go back way back into the archives of us, in episode 43, I talked about the Aprilia Tureg experience, which literally you showed up, you handed them a small bag of money and said, give me a motorcycle. <laughs> I want to ride around Baja, California or Baja in Mexico. Yeah. Now they have decided that was such a hit. They are doing Baja again and they've added yet another one. So they now have the Tureg Experience New Mexico. That one is August 9th through August 15th here. Like I said, if you need to get away from Daytona, the Baja version, <laughs> that is from March 12th to March 19th. Oh. So it, it we've got some uh, something that coincides here in order to be like, I need away from people. And I kind of like mm -hmm. that idea. Um, it's with a state patch. <laughs> Correct. So they, to me, it, it's, they had so much success with this last year and it sold out so quickly that they're like, we've got to do this again. So they did. So with this, it is $3,750, which to me, to show up someplace and have them take care of your room, board, food, chase truck. And they say, here's a motorcycle for a week. Don't throw it at the scenery too hard. They realize you're going to drop it, but <laughs> don't throw it at the scenery too hard. For $3,700, to me, that is an absolute steal. Now, for the New Mexico one, if you want to bring your own bike, it's $750 less, which to me makes absolutely no sense, but I get it. Bring your own, bring your own bike instead of bring your own beer. Um, bring your own bike, and like I said, it's $3,000 even. Now, this is not for the beginner to try this thing out like most of the demo rides it's something like daytona in that this is 200 plus miles a day this is very dual sport oriented this will cover everything from highway to single track and that's going to be up to and in most cases a little more than 200 miles every day so you better you get have you better have that that callous butt otherwise you are not going to make it through this <laughs> So that being said, um, as of press time here, there was still a few spots left on both trips, but something tells me once you guys see this, that is not going to be the case anymore. So go over there once you're done watching this, hit that button, throw down your $3,700 or $3,000 if you're one of the lucky ones that got the Tureg last year, and go for a little ride of about 1,000 miles in a week. So that's, I mean, we've talked about these before, Jackie, how we think that this is a great way. I mean, 
one of the big reasons that I'm not doing this is because I realized that this would be an $18,000 ride for me because after spending <laughs> a week on a tour egg, I'd be buying one instead of just the $3,700 to rent one. But I mean, we've talked I about mean, this and I mean, we agree that these are great rides. I mean, yeah, what yeah. are your thoughts? Yeah, that's that's literally their entire point, Josh, is that they know yep. there's no way you're going to go on some incredible adventure that's like completely curated. Somebody carries your luggage yep. for you. They feed you like, you know, I mean, they transport your luggage for you and then they feed you with all this jazz. And then you're just going to be like, no, here's the keys. I'm just you know, I'm not into it. I'm just going to fly right. home. No way. You are getting your checkbook out on day five and you're like. Here's yeah. all my money. Go ahead and take it. Uh, yeah, so I think that these are great, though. I, I love these types of adventures that these companies are having. I think it is so smart. It is such a cool yep. marketing play. And you get all of this awesome content out of it. I mean, why, yeah. why isn't everybody doing this? Why, why, why not? I don't get it. Anywho, uh, I think that that is fantastic. And the scenery, I'm sure, is epic from New Mexico. That would be a heck of an adventure for sure. Um, so the second story for today from my neck of the woods, I had a chance to sit down with Cinnamon Kearns, who is the VP and general manager of the MIC Events, which is who hosts AIM Expo, that Motorcycle Power Sports News, myself included, obviously, had the chance to go to in Las Vegas this year. We had a great time. The show was very full of industry people, folks that I haven't seen in like two and three years now. Really awesome awesome turnout, cool products, great conversations about where we are, where we're going, the future of motorcycles, future of power sports, lots of good talks. I had a chance to sit down with Cinnamon though and talk to her a little bit about what's going on with the AIM Expo show. So let's go ahead and check out this interview from AIM Expo with Cinnamon Kearns. Hi there, MPN. Welcome back. This is Jackie Van Ham. We are here at the AIM Expo here in Las Vegas 2023 with the boss in charge, Cinnamon Kearns. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. I know that you work so hard putting together this show. This is a labor of love. Great crowds. Tons of industry people are here. What's new for 2023 here at the AIM Expo? Ooh, that is a big question. <laughs> Such a big question. You know, we've been working on this obviously for a year, so it's so new, but I feel like it's just been in my heart for the last year. So I'm trying to get it all together. Um, I think, so we brought back the media presentation stage, which we haven't had in several years. So new product presentations, new product central, um, you know, really what's new to this market. Um, E-bike demo course, that's new. We haven't had that in many years. It, it started off small. It is now, we have a waiting list for it, for people waiting, oh, wow. <laughs> hoping brands will cancel so they can get in. Wow. Um, that's exciting. We brought back uh, classroom education sessions. So we continued the disruptive thinking stage uh, you know, on the show floor, but then we brought back classroom sessions for that more day-to-day um, -day business and dealer best practice type sessions. Okay. Um, I, I can't even, I can't even I name know. it all. I know it's a lot. <laughs> I know that's a loaded question because you've got so much going on. What type of vendor is new here? What are you starting to see show up here? E-bikes is starting to kind of really take on this big life out here. I mean, honestly, somebody made the comment jokingly, oh, look at the motorcycles at our e-bike show. <laughs> and so there are e-bikes. Um, you, I don't think you can walk more than 10 feet without running into one. Yeah. Um, they're everywhere. As I mentioned, we have the e-bike track. So we have 16 brands plus all the Tucker house brands, wow. um, e-bike house brands, I should clarify, yeah. um, that are running on the track and I, they are, ta they are taking over. Yeah. What is the future for AIM Expo? Does this show stay a B2B, a once a year show? Is this show going to change up? Is this going to become a consumer facing show? Is this show going to happen more often, please? <laughs> really, really good questions. Um, I try, I try cinnamon. I feel like maybe you've done this before. <laughs> Just once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> more than me for sure. Okay, I'm gonna, um, but I'm gonna put the pin to you. All what, right. What's happening? So the only thing I can tell you for sure for <gasps> next year is that we're going to be back in Vegas. Okay. February 7 through 9. Okay. Uh, we're going to be back in the South Hall. So that I know for sure. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if we're going to bring consumers back. You know, we've had them in the past. Um, this is really our first year being B2B with the Q1 timing. Last year we were, but we were just still coming out of COVID and 
you know, people were still wearing masks. It was a different landscape. And this year you can feel the energy, you can feel the vibe. It's, I mean, when you ask what's different, honestly, that's the biggest thing that's different is the energy on this show floor. The dealers are happy, the exhibitors are happy, and you can just feel this vibe that wasn't there. Um, so does that mean that consumers come back? I don't know, maybe this. Maybe we have to get this part right. Okay. And let's focus on our B2B side and let's focus on our industry and what makes us great. Yeah. Um, and then, then, let, then we'll figure out how the consumers may or may not fit in. So I think it's interesting. Tucker Rocky is a big part of this show. Is there an opportunity to bring in other distributors? I think there is. So Parts has a presence on the floor as well. Okay. Um, one, of the, one of the things we're doing this year that I'm so proud of our team for pulling together is we actually have all three of the major distributors on stage tomorrow. Ooh. So we have Paul Langley from Parts, we have Mark McAllister from Tucker, and Shara Gibb from Western. Of course. So they're going to be on stage kind of talking about the future of the industry from their perspective. So the idea of bringing the distributors back together, that has been a goal of mine since yeah. we launched the show. I would love to see it happen. I think we're taking steps. Yes, I think the opportunity exists. Cool. Um, we'll continue to have those conversations. Having those three distributors here, does that then leverage into more dealers coming because it's more of a hub? It, it does. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, shows used to be all about the giant displays and spending ridiculous amounts of money. And it last year allowed us to kind of reset that table. And we want it to be about the connections and the who you're seeing and the business that you're doing and the connecting and that's what we've seen so the distributors are coming in tucker has a huge booth but parts doesn't but the key people are here yeah. and so does that mean that brings in more dealers yes because they want to get business done and it's a better roi to spend time talking with great people than looking at a piece of art that's on, <laughs> that's on a booth wall. Flashy booth. Right, exactly, yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, for um, sure, for sure. And then of course we have the OEs that are here as well and they've adopted that same you know, mentality. They're not coming in with their giant consumer booth spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. They've come in with simple, you know, function over form. And again, they're here to talk to dealers. They're here to do business. And the dealers know what the brands represent. They don't need, again, that flashy booth to tell the story. Interesting. Um, I agree with you, though. My, my, my DMs has been blowing over the past two weeks now with all of our industry friends. Can't wait to see you. So glad you're going to be yep. there. And I've seen so many familiar faces. It has been such an awesome homecoming we've only we're only on day one I i'm so excited for this show this has been just my favorite week so far seeing everybody including yourself thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us because thank i know you, you are the busiest person at the entire show well we have our industry party that i have to go get ready for so you know i have some glow sticks i have to crack and some you know light towers we gotta light up so yeah we have work to do we do have, you know it's not just business here we do like to have a good time it is vegas here at aim expo thank and you we so are much in the Power sports industry so what else would we do we're in the we're in the business of joy we are we are in the business of joy thank you so much for taking thank the you, time Jackie. to talk to us i appreciate love you. you thank you love you thank you so awesome to have a have a second to chat with Cinnamon. She literally is the busiest human being at that show. So I'm so stoked that we had a chance to say, hey, it was a wonderful AIM Expo. Uh, thank you so much, Cinnamon, and everybody at AIM for, for making the opportunity and space for us. So now let's go ahead and jump into Josh's second story for today. It was something about KTM, SMT, WTF? Correct. So, I mean, to me, it's KTM announced that on April 24th, the SMT will be back. Now, I mean, there's also, and I mean, I, I agree with the sentiment here that KTM has left there also in their ad, but it's, it's, this is the weirdest bike and the SMT means supermoto touring. Um, what happens, and the only thing that I can say is what happens when you leave a 450 SMC and a gold wing in a garage alone at night. Um, <laughs> you're, you're going to get this. And to me, it's so this bike existed previously as the 990 version. And that's the photo that we have here. This is the old 990 SMT. And what you notice about this is this is very similar to kind of the, it's a cross between the 990 Duke and the 990 Adventure that they used to have. And what you kind of see with this, though, is this is 17-inch cast wheels, but obviously it's stripped down. It is meant to be as light as possible. It's got aggressive geometry to make sure that it, it is as flickable as possible for a bike that has a fairing on it. So to me, 
this is one of these weird things that I, I really, really hope is successful. But it is such a, an odd bike because it's not set up to do what it's set up to do. Because, I mean, for me, I mean, I will often take and throw the 17s on my bike and go hang out with other 400s and 450s on the Supermoto track. And we will go have fun the entire afternoon. And why we love that is because it's a super small, super light bike that you can flick around and you can do stupid human tricks on very easily. <laughs> Well, when you make it that much heavier, it becomes that much more difficult to do. So I'm pretty sure that this SMT, what they're going for, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be on the 890 platform. Um, obviously, the uh, 890 Adventure and the 890 Duke, they, they share a lot of things. They share some frame components. They share a number of other items. I'm sure that it's going to have a much more street-focused suspension, but... It's obviously going to need to be longer travel than the Duke. Um, it's not going to need to be as long travel as the Adventure, though. Um, to me, it, it's this weird bike. It's a weird niche. I, I remember years ago, one of my favorite motorcycles that I have ever owned was the KTM Duke 2, which was that 640 single. It was 17-inch wheels. It was a supermoto, but it had a small fairing to it it still would go out and run the road. So I'm interested to see how this is received. It's been a while that it's been gone. Like I said, it's a very weird niche. It's supposed to be flickable, but it says touring. So where does it actually fit? Obviously with 17s, you're not doing a whole lot off-road. But to me, I mean, I remember years ago, someone was quoted as saying the KTM Duke 2, you should just put a pocket on the back of your helmet for your driver's license to make it easier for the police officer to take it. And I think <laughs> that is what this is geared towards. I'm interested to see April 24th is when we're going to have the full, the full stats on it. So, I, I mean, I'm yeah. assuming that you would hoon this thing, Jackie, no? I, I don't know, Josh. I got to admit, I find the whole like sport tour as a category just a real head scratcher for me. It is such a niche within a niche within a niche. Correct. Um, this feels like it is it is a little bit of um, in the same playing area as the S1000XR from BMW, uh, although that's a four cylinder, but it is like a sport tour bike, although they call that like a sport tour adventure or something crazy. Anyway, these mishmash bikes that are like weird genre blending and genre mixing to me you know god bless do what you gotta do it just isn't my thing i i it's like it's not enough of a sport bike to be a sport bike it's not enough of a tour bike to be a tour bike but let's just mash a whole bunch of stuff together and see people just want to tour real 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 fast <laughs> I, what i what i see is interesting with these though is these are the types of bikes that in the right hands will change yeah. sport bikes you can stay yes. comfortable and you can do stupid human stuff. So if you want to go yeah. to a loading dock and jump off the loading dock, <laughs> this thing will do it yeah. all day long, and it's not gonna it's not gonna get your vertebrae all crunched together. So, to me, there there are people that buy this. Is there enough people to buy it to support it? That's gonna be the big question questions well we're all gonna have to wait and see how that one goes sure. sounds like the reveal or launch is going to be at the end of april you know we'll be bringing you that coverage and everything happening out here in motor cycles thank you so much for tuning in for another great episode of our program whether you're watching on youtube or the facebooks make sure you take a second click that share button thank you so much for subscribing liking following all the things and stuff go ahead and do it and we will see you next week